Okay, so we're at Catholic philosophy part one, the Catholic philosophy until the 11th century. So Catholic philosophy in general was characterized by what would be popularly known as scholatism. Basically, he tried to reconcile Aristotle's works with the faith, which is Christianity. And what resulted was Catholic philosophy, philosophers who tried to think that the church is right, the Bible. And then he tried to use reasons from classical Greek philosophers, mostly Aristotle to support it. Plato was popular in the beginning, but it mostly shifted to Aristotle. Okay. So Christianity itself is the what is known as the original religion. So it's a uh, sacred history. So what it is is that Christianity formed the basis for most of the other religions like Islam or other spin-offs except for um Judaism which itself formed the base of Christianity. So Christianity's the doctrines could be known as Gnosticism and Manichaeism. You don't need to know too much about Gnosticism except it was the first basis for the good and evil. Manichaeism it was the idea of the good of evil based on the um, former theories before Christianity. So basically, Manichism was the idea that good and evil coexisted together in a perfectual conflict, and that no neither could overpower the other because they were exactly the same. So Christianity was, had a couple of issues like that when they tried to determine what it was. So the main for main church of Christianity would be, of course, the Catholic Church located in Italy. So when whenever there was a conflict, the church decided which one was the orthodox belief and which one was heresy. And heresy was punishable by, of course, excommunication by the church. So in the beginning, there are a couple of people called the main doctors of the church. St. Ambrose, St. Jerome, Gregory the Great, who's the Pope, and St. Augustine, who was a philosopher. So what we're going to focus on is St. Augustine, because the other people are important, but he was the main philosopher. So St. Augustine could be argued to have the pure philosophy. So he could he had what it was he had just the pure philosophy parts, not relying on religion, but just philosophy. He was one of the only Christian philosophers to do so because most people base their beliefs on the Bible. So his book was Pure Philosophy, and his second one, his second book was called Philosophy of History. So the City of God would be an example of a philosophy of history, and the Confession would be the pure philosophy. The third thing to know about him is that he had a theory of salvation that said that even if he work free will and effort, that wouldn't come. Salvation could be only done determined by God. Of course, this belief was attacked later by the Calvinists, but for right now, his idea was formed the main foundation of the early church. The City of God is basically an allegorical work talking about the Romans destroying Christianity and the history that comes after. Most of it is inflated and not exactly historically correct, but it has philosophical merit as well. So St. Benedict and Pope Gregory the Great were just the main figures in the church that did contribute to the rise of Christianity, not philosophy, but Christianity in general. So Benedict was a chastised person. He talked about miracles, and then he dealt with attacks in the Catholic Church. So he was more of a major figure in protecting the church. Gregory the Great was one of the person, the main pope authority of the church who had who lived in parallel time with St. Augustine. So he expanded the pope authority for the Christian church, and he installed Augustine as the main philosopher in the orthodox belief. So Benedict more focused on more of the chastity, the miracles, the attacks part of Christianity Church, which had to do with, which had to do with the parts what coexisted, what made the church, and Gregory the Great just expanded up the religion of itself in the applications in society. So in the Dark Ages, there were a couple of people who were important as well. John the Scot was one of those people. He translated the on the division of nature. Uh, no, no, he didn't translate. He wrote on the division of nature, but he did translate the Bible, which provided influential because, of course, everybody makes mistakes, but his mistakes were less than others, which made a proper understanding of the Bible from a lot of people. He argued for the division of nature, and he argued that there are four natures, and that he believed that the church and the bishop were important. All right, and that's about it.